Well, I guess I can start. Uh, bonjour. Thank you all for coming. I'm Polina. I'm a verification engineer at Runtime Verification. Before that, I was a PhD student, and I also worked with MakerDAO on improving the adoption of symbolic execution tools for smart contract and DeFi security, and that's what the talk is going to be about. So let's start with why do we need something like symbolic execution? And the short answer to that is because we want to eliminate bugs from our code base. And symbolic execution can help us with that because it's one of the formal verification techniques. And there is, of course, more to formal verification than just bug finding, but let's focus on this application in this talk. Um, let's see how it works. Uh, here I have a small uh, smart contract example we'll use in this talk. So here we have a function, it's called backdoor. It takes an input parameter x, and in this function we declare a variable y that is set by zero, um, set to zero by default, and then we also have an if statement. What it means from the point of uh, program analysis is that there are two possible ways in which, uh, which this function execution can take. So there are two execution paths, one if this if condition is true. The condition says that x plus 1 is equal to 1024. x here is the input parameter, which means that if x is 1023, then we'll be taking this execution path. In this execution path, we set y to 42, and then at the end, we have an assert checking if y is not equal to 42. What it means is going to fail. This condition is going to be violated since asserts are commonly used in smart contracts to express conditions that should never evaluate to false. It means that there is a bug in this contract and that's what we'll be trying to detect using the techniques we consider in this talk. Alternatively, if we take the else branch, um, nothing happens, y remains zero. Zero is not equal to 42, so the assert is not going to fail in this execution path. Um, so what techniques do we have that can help us um, detect, identify this issue here? Well. One of the techniques, the most simple one probably, uh, is unit testing. So in a unit test, usually we assume that x has some concrete, concrete value. For example, we can assume that x is 5. If x is 5, um, the if statement, this condition, does not evaluate to true. We are taking the else branch, y0, not 42. The assert doesn't fail, which means that we haven't identified the bug, even though we know it's there. And that illustrates the insufficiency of relying on unit tests solely for uh, security and correctness assurance in smart contracts because it provides us with limited information about the smart contract behaviors. Um, that being said, of course, it's, it's a very useful technique and I'm pretty sure that every project should use them. Um, besides that, unit testing are usually used to analyze happy path and there might be a bit challenging to use uh, in order to identify some unknown issues. So in order to increase coverage, we can do fuzzing as well. That means that instead of just running our code on a single concrete input, we'll be running it on a sequence of randomly generated concrete inputs. Fuzzing is, is very efficient. I highly recommend using that as well. The problem with it is that all these random inputs can still drive the execution towards the same execution path, which means that we'll be exploring it over and over again and we won't be able to identify the bug because it can be challenging for the fuzzer to randomly generate the value that will satisfy this very specific condition that we have here. And that is in fact what happens. I ran Foundry's fuzzer on this example 65,000 times, I think, and uh, it doesn't identify this fail cert, but you can also try it yourself. Um, but I also said that symbolic execution can help us identify this issue, and here is how. So the basic main idea behind symbolic execution is that we don't restrict the value of x to some specific concrete input, but instead we assume that it can take any possible value, and that's what we call symbolic variable. Then we'll go down every possible execution path and we'll further narrow down the set of values that x and other variables can take based on the conditions that we encounter in this execution path. So the conditions comes, come from things like if statements, uh, loops, assert requires statements, any conditional statement. Um, here, since x can take any values, it might as well be 1023, so we'll finally get to execute this true branch of the if statement on the left where the assert fails. Um, the formula on this slide represents the state where the assert is failing. Um, so we'll finally detect it because that evaluates to true, indicating that the assert can fail here. Um, the input to a symbolic execution tool usually looks something like this. Um, normally it's the source code or the byte code that we are going to symbolically execute. The output, we want it to look something like this. So we want it to tell us, the tool, to tell us that the backdoor function should be called with this particular concrete input for the assert to be violated. Symbolic execution is commonly seen as a way to generalize testing because it allows us to reason about sets of inputs that would be impractical to reason about using, for example, a test suite. We wouldn't be able to cover as much. 
Um, besides that, symbolic execution can also be viewed as this translation from the source code or bytecode to this more formal logical representation, such as this formula we can see on the slide. And we can reason about this formula. Uh, but the question now is how do we get from all these logical formulas to uh, the output that tells us with what specific values we should run this code for the assert to be violated? And that is what um, symbolic execution tools use SMT solvers for. That's a very sophisticated piece of software. SMT stands for Satisfiability Modulo Theories. There are several of them, some of them are on the slide, but essentially what they do, they take a formula, this logical formula representing, for example, the state where the assert is failing, in our example, it runs some analysis on it, and based on the analysis, it tells us either that this formula is satisfiable, which means that it can evaluate to true if our symbolic variable takes some particular value, such as the one we expect, if the formula contains some contradictory clauses, which means that it can never evaluate to true, um, it's going to tell us that it's unsat or unsatisfiable. The third type of input, sorry, of output is, uh, I don't know. So if it ran out of resources, it cannot really answer our question. Here on the slide, I have an example of the manual encoding that I have performed of this Solidity code that we had on the previous slide. Uh, That's the translation to the Python API of this three SMT solver. Um, so if we encode this example and ask if the assert can fail, it almost instantly tells us that it is possible if x takes this value that we expected it to show us. Altogether with typing, this took me 33 seconds, but if you type faster than me, you can do even better. Uh, so obviously, it's a very simple example, but I personally think that it illustrates that symbolic execution is a very powerful tool and technique, and personally, I think that a year from now, it's going to... Um, have a very big presence in the smart contract development processes, so maybe now is a good time to start adding it to a tool belt. Um, in general, there are many symbolic execution tools for smart contracts, and as part of our effort to improve and increase the adoption of this technique, we have selected and examined um, some open source tools, the, the best open source tools, uh, for symbolically analyzing EVM bytecode. So these four tools here made it to the top of our list for usability, versatility, and being stable in general. So the tools are Misreal by Consensus, Manticore by Trail of Bits, HEVM originally part of the Dapp Tools framework, um, currently developed by Ethereum Foundation, and EVMC, which is the only academic tool that made it to our list that's developed by a group at Ruhr Universität Bochum. So let's get back to our sample contract. And as powerful as all these tools are, only two of them detect this fail assert out of the box. Uh, Misreal and HEVM. So all these tools are rapidly changing and evolving, uh, but at the moment, to use them efficiently and effectively, you might have to tweak their behaviors quite a bit or slightly change the way the analysis is performed. So here I'm also going to show some landmark tips on how to use the symbolic execution tools in practice. Uh, for example, Manticore out of the box doesn't report this um, assert failure, even though uh, it's there. Uh, however, if we we'll look into what happens. Uh, it turns out that Manticore only detects and reports failed asserts in Solidity versions prior to 0 0.8 uh, when the EVM representation of a failed assert had changed. So even if we say something trivial, like assert false, it will not be able to report that either. Uh, however, if we downgrade Solidity version to 0 0.7, um, it's going to detect this failed assert in less than two seconds. And we also similarly added the detection of failed asserts to EBMC ourselves. So that brings us to the advice number one. Uh, if the tool doesn't report any issues, make sure that it actually reports something. It's something trivial like assert false and see if it fails because there are a lot of reasons for the tool not to report anything other than beyond just the code being perfect and correct. Uh, one other aspect that we are considering is the support of several SMT solvers. Uh, it matters because the performance of different SMT solvers may vary. And for example, here the timing uh, all the timings are based on the same SMT solver D3, but if we use a different one in ETHBMC, we'll get an almost 20 times better timing. Uh, here's another example of a tool reporting that everything is fine over a more complex contract. So that is a simplified contract from the MakerDAO code base uh, that contains a real bug that, of course, has been fixed. Uh, it has a function that's called counterexample that deterministically fails an assertion expressing an important invariant after the execution of four function calls. Um, so the contract is called Minivat. Uh, however, if we run Misreal on it, uh, it will finish the analysis in four minutes, but it would still, it, it would not report any issues. However, if we 
anticipate that there might be some SMT solver related issues, which we should, and that's advice number two. Uh, we might think that maybe the SMT solver is quietly failing due to the timeout in the background. And in fact, that's what happens. And if you observe some inconsistent behaviors in the symbolic execution tool, if it performs inconsistently between different runs, uh, there is a chance that there is also some SMT solver timeout happening. Um, if we increase the solver timeout, uh, Misreal will run way past this four minutes. Does it help? Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, that happens because there are actually a lot of aspects that affect the performance of the symbolic execution tool. And um, in general, symbolic execution traverses all possible states of a smart contract. So the number of states grows exponentially with the contract size. So one of the biggest impact on performance um, comes from limiting the scope of the analysis. And also you can, um, otherwise you can optimize the interactions with the SMT solver, for example, by querying it less frequently. So all this might be achieved by the options that are present in the symbolic execution tools um, that you're using. For example, in the end, we managed to make Misreal find this issue in less than two minutes. Um, that's the advice number three. Uh, know your options, know the options present in the symbolic execution tool you're running, and use them to limit the scope and optimize the performance otherwise. For example, you can focus on the detection of only some specific vulnerabilities, uh, not reasoning about gas, and so on. Uh, overall, Misreal and Manticore, two Python-based tools, are flexible and um, easier to use in general. The timings on the chart uh, represent the best, most optimized run of these tools to detect the issue um, that I have seen shown in the contract on the previous slide. Um, each of them and BMC, uh, they're written in Haskell and Rust respectively, uh, are on average faster than the other two. So it might seem that the usability versus performance uh, is a trade-off in the existing symbolic execution tool, uh, but a lot of efforts are currently being put by the respective teams to improve the situation. And one example of that is symbolic testing. So that's one of the emerging trends, which allows developers to apply symbolic execution to existing tests um, that already exist in the project. Uh, that makes it easier to introduce symbolic execution to the development processes. It also limits the scope of the analysis because the analysis will be restricted only to these things that are uh, being executed within the test. And in general, I think it dramatically improves the usability of such, th such tooling. So symbolic testing is supported by our old friend, HVM. We added um, the support of symbolic testing to his BMC by integrating it with Foundry ourselves, but that's probably a different story. Um, there is Helmash by A16Z that appeared quite recently, and also there is KVM by runtime verification. Uh, on this slide, we also have the same Minivat smart contract, but now we have the test instead of the country example function, but it encodes essentially the same thing. And we'll use it for benchmarking these tools as well. Right, so since symbolic testing is quite easy to use, we'll be evaluating this tooling based on their completeness, which we define as the support of complete EVM semantics and uh, cheat codes that Foundry uses to tweak the analysis. KVM is by far the most complete one because it supports the complete EVM semantics, and uh, in fact, it also passes all tests from the Ethereum conformance test suite for Ethereum clients. It also provides extensive cheat code support, and a lot of work is currently being put um, to make the performance better. For example, when I ran KVM on the same example uh, back in April, it took 32 minutes to finish the analysis and identify the issue on a powerful server, and now um, it finishes less than in three minutes on my laptop. Uh, Halmash and HVMC also take a few minutes to finish the analysis, but they are a bit less complete. And uh, HVM takes just 1.5 seconds. It's blazing fast. I don't have any other comments here. The concluding advice here is that um, I recommend you finding your tool and learning how to use it efficiently. So with the security guarantees that are inherent to symbolic execution uh, that might give you an edge in safe smart contract development, auditing, uh, bug bounties probably, and all these tools get better and better and easier to use day by day because the teams are developing them very actively. This talk is loosely based on the two blog posts that describe the evaluation of symbolic execution tooling that we have performed, and one of them is available um, on this link on the slide. And in addition, we have also prepared uh, some Docker containers with these tools fully set up so that you can um, try to run them seamlessly. And that actually completes my presentation. Thank you so much, and I'd be happy to answer any questions.
So in your slide, looking at the, the usability and the performance, how much impact does the usability have on your performance as the person who's actually setting the thing up to run it? Thank you so much. Yeah, I actually wanted to wanted to say something about it. So I have to say that Mistral and Manticore, um, we rank them as more usable. Uh, so one of the reasons why we do that is because they provide a lot of options. So you can, they're quite flexible. You can turn off unnecessary detectors. You can basically do a lot of things to optimize their performance. And that's why uh, actually Manticore and Mistral in the most optimized runs uh, don't perform much worse than EVMC or HEVM that are faster on average, but are less flexible. So them being usable and, and providing more options to adjust the, the analysis, um, well, first make them more performant, it's easier to extend them. Uh, so we have added similar functionality to Manticore and EthBMC, and it took considerably more effort to do this in EthBMC. Well, it, it might have something to do with my personal skills, because one of, is written in Python and the other is in Rust. But it's easier to extend, it's easier to add some additional vulnerability detectors and so on. So I'd say that it has a great impact, but still, well, so there, there is a limit to how fast Mistral and Manticore can be. And for example, neither of them can complete the analysis in 1.5 seconds as HEVM because they take, I think, two or three seconds just to start. Um, but in general, well, I would say it's extremely important. Um, well, <laughs> I hope I answered your questions. Sort of. So what, so what I'm trying to get at is, you know, if I go and pay someone to do this work, you doing the setup and the thinking and setting the options, that's expensive time, right? And, and that's real time. The difference between two seconds and 12 seconds and you know, 112 seconds for a report doesn't make any difference. It's like, by the time you send that to me in an email, that, that difference is completely irrelevant, right? And unless there's a really, really big difference. Right. Well, to be fair, that's a simple example, and that's why the difference is insignificant. And uh, in theory, more performant tools, and for example, tools that support several SMT solvers, other than one that might struggle with some particular thing we have in the smart contract, and we have a lot of those, uh, might be able to do something in the end. So there are a lot of, at the moment, there are some scalability issues that are being addressed, but uh, the question is essentially whether you can get some results with the tool you're using, and it's easier to get these results from the tool that is easier to, to tweak. Uh, but in general, at the same time, if they're not, if they're like inherently not performant, if they're bound to use one SMT solver that does not perform well on, for example, what do we have there? Like nonlinear arithmetics, for example, or large bit factors, and we have a lot of those in smart contracts, then you won't really be able to get any results, even though it might work you know, better on some simpler examples. So I guess the bottom line is that Take some work to find the tool that works best for you. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The question is whether you're, you'll be able to get some results you're expecting, especially if you're talking about a relatively large code base, which might be challenging. Thanks. Thanks for the talk. Um, so you showed a small example where the fuzzer couldn't find the bug, but the Simbok execution engine could. Um, and what I was thinking there is that um, a lot of coverage-based fuzzers may be able to easily find that bug because they're going to be um, coverage directed, right? So could you just elaborate a little bit more on the advantages of using symbolic execution over a coverage guided fuzzer? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, I'm, to be fair, I'm less familiar with coverage based fuzzing. I think the question is still whether uh, it would work in some very with some very sophisticated smart contract that contains a lot of, for example, nastative conditions if you have to very carefully um, device what input variables should be in order to pass all these checks. Um, in general, yes, so I agree that definitely I think the fact that it doesn't identify these issues in the smart contract just characterizes the fuzzers that I have used um, as, you know, having limited ability to reason, um, because if you simplify it, they'll be able to find it. Uh, but in general, yeah, I would say that symbolic execution is probably, uh, is generally considered more useful when it comes to uh, some conditions that are constructed in a way that it's very hard to bypass them without some automated mathematical reasoning about what value should it take. Thanks. Thank you.